Hello, good people of YouTube. Mount Batten here. And today we have the newly fully released Tier 10 Techline British Battlecruiser, the St. Vincent Import, to review for you guys today. With the release of Update 11.8, the British Battlecruiser line has become fully researchable by everyone. So, this ship is currently available to research for free. She does sit at the pinnacle of the British Battlecruiser tech tree. And she is quite a sight to behold. This is the I-3 design, real-life design, come to life in World of Warships. And as always, modeling and art guys, you guys knocked it out of the park here. A very unique looking ship indeed. The idea of these ships is that um, if you stuff all of the main guns in the front half of the ship, then you can focus your armor belt on just having to, you know, protect the magazines here, because that's the stuff that explodes, and the stuff that you don't want to explode. So obviously when you're arming your ship, you only have to armor from here to here, whereas if you had this um, number three turret all the way back here, you'd have to armor all the way back here to all the way up here with that thick belt armor. But doing this saves weight, then you shove the, machin the machinery space back here, and that offsets the weight, and now you've got this weird design. <laughs> very cool design. Um, I like it. It's very unique looking. So, yeah. Uh, high marks for me right off the bat there. You might notice, too, there's a little bit of XP on the ship. I have played it earlier this morning before I sat down to, to uh, do this first impressions review and then play it some more for this review. So, some, ha some matches have been had on the ship, but more will come for this review. Alright, so, um, this ship, this ship is, uh, very, very, very much a development of the, uh, what's it called? The, um, Duncan at Tier 9. It's pretty much an expansion of what the Duncan is at Tier 9. And that's a good thing, because the Duncan, once I finally got some good matches in her, turned out to be a pretty darn good ship. Now, the St. Vincent's main difference between her and the Duncan is that she has 18-inch guns instead of the Duncan's. 16 inch guns so a pretty big pickup there too oh by the way i'm still like deathly ill if you hear me hiccuping or coughing whatever it's my allergies it's that time of the year so i do apologize for that and i my voice might sound a little more scraggly but can't do anything about that that's just time just the time of the year so we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this saint vincent look at her armor look at her stats talk about how she's played in game and then give her a score toward the end of the video so let's go ahead and look at her armor shall we <clears throat> So, oh, by the way, if you do uh, purchase the economic bonus, it's the standard tier 10 economic bonus, as you see here, along with the other bonuses I have. And a lot of uh, viewers ask, why do I have the, um, the commander XP and the XP bonus going on the ship? It's because, well, when you have to review all ships that come out uh, for your channel, it's a pretty nice thing to have a stack of um, XP laying around for when those research viewer ships come out, like the Sevastopol. Obviously, if, if you are just running your bonuses, just worry about running the credits bonus and the um, free XP on any, like, tier 10 or premium ships. But yeah, that's just what I have on mine. Uh, this is the camo as well that's available to purchase with the ship for uh, 200 doubloons. I am running the, alter the alternative version of it. The default version looks like that, but I prefer the black and white motif going on here. Anyway, so the ship's armor. So, is a battle cruiser, so she has a 25mm bow, a 25mm stern, excuse me, sprints notification, and a flat transom stern here, just like a lot of other British ships, so that can be easily overmatched. Um, even if it was 32mm, obviously that flat 90 degree side is not something that's nice to have on your stern. Then torpedo planes, 32, upper belts, 32, mid deck is 40, Bound stern deck is 25, and then the superstructure is 19, of course. Turrets are 457 millimeters on the front, 356 millimeters on the side. Uh, rears are 712 millimeters, and tops are 203. Take away her external plating. Whoops. You'll find her citadel is just at the waterline, and she does have a little bit of a turtle back going on here with the 330 millimeter belt there and it strengthens up to 356 millimeters for the forward half so you got a little bit stronger um turtle back going in from the bow but from the stern it's a little bit thinner so keep that in mind all right so her survivability 
She has 79,400 hit points, which is pretty low for a tier 10 battleship, but this is a battle cruiser, so obviously it's not as heavily as armored, so you're missing some tonnage there, and 23% torpedo damage reduction. Her guns, you get 9 457mm 18 inch guns. Now, of course, they're not 460, so they can't overmatch 32, but they can very much overmatch 30. They reload in 30 second space. Their minimum shell switching time is 30 seconds. They 180 in 30 second space. Maximum dispersion 220 meters space. Maximum range is 20.5 uh, kilometers space, which is very nice. HE does a maximum damage of 7100 and a 63% chance of causing a fire. 7100. Let's actually look at the Thunderer. What's her HE Alpha? It is 8200. So you've got about a thousand less damage than the Thunderer's 457s, but you're only down 2% when it comes to the fire starting chance. And this is based on the sequence before any commander skills or flags have been put on. While the Thunderer doesn't have a commander on right, on right there right now, but it does have the flags on. So you've got pretty much the same or a very similar fire starting capabilities as the Thunderer, but you get another gun. But anyway, uh, the HE can pin to 76 millimeters of armor, come up to 2 to 757 meters a second. AP does a maximum damage of 14,900 and does 762 meters a second out of the tubes. Secondary, you actually have a lot of these. <clears throat> you have 20 of the 19, I'm sorry, of the um, 113 millimeter secondaries. They reload in 5 seconds. They have a maximum range base of 7.3 kilometers. Do a maximum damage of 1700 and have an 8% chance of causing a fire on the target. But they only pin 19 millimeters of armor. So if you were to spec into IFHE, these things aren't really pinning much. They're more about the random fires that they start. But then you have 16 of these 152 millimeter secondary guns, which really are in 12 seconds. You can have a 7.3 kilometer maximum range. Do a maximum damage of 2150. Have a 9% chance of causing a fire on the target. And these do pin 25 millimeters of armor. Which is a bit better, but still, I wouldn't spec into IFHE because you're going to wreck this beautiful 63% chance of starting a, fi a fire per shell on these main battery guns. So, right off there, as nice as the secondaries look and how much potential they could have, not really worth it in my opinion. Alright, for a torpedo, she does have the semi-guided, or whatever you want to call these, gyroscopic torpedoes, or torpedo turning mechanics as the game calls them. You get two of these 622mm torps, they have a maximum range of 10 kilometers. they travel at 69 knots, they reload in 45 seconds, they do a maximum damage of 29,367 out the gate, which is very nice, and they're detectable from 1.7 kilometers away. It's just some very nice torpedo firing angles from the bow, which you'll see in the gameplay section, I'm sure. Uh, she does get two attacking flights of the airstrike, as all tier 10 ships do now. Uh, AA is rating at 85. She does have DFAA, and when DFAA is operational, it's pretty beefy AA. So you get 14 of these single-mounted 40mm Bofors. You get 20 of these dual-mounted, um, what are these? Bofors, the Vickers? Uh, yeah, Bofors. Um, then you get the octuple pom-poms, because why not? And then you get the 113mm guns counting as dual purpose AA as well. Alright, no, these aren't buffers. These are um, OQFs. My bad. Alright, so. Uh, maneuverability, she travels at 13.2. I'm sorry, 13.2. 32.5 knots. And she has a turning circle race of 970 meters. A rudder shift time is 17 seconds. And her consumable base is 15.8 kilometers. Alright, to her consumables. You get DFA, like I mentioned earlier. You get an engine boost that gives you an 8% boost to your maximum speed for 120 seconds. It reloads at 120 seconds as well, which is pretty nice. Pretty quick cooldown time when an engine boost for a battleship. You get the specialized repair teams. Not quite as good as the Conqueror's um, repair, uh, dry dock repair, but still a very good heal. You get 1,588 HP back per second for 20 seconds. So, yeah, you can regen just about a little over half of your HP with this um, and it's very nice as well. Religion 80 seconds, 3 charges base. And then you get damage con as well. And it's the normal damage con, 15 seconds, 80 second reload time. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw a uh, commander module build on here and I'll walk you guys through that right here in a second. Alright, I am running Burt Dunkuck on here so he does get the improved um, Grease the Gears skill. 
just so you guys know. I would recommend putting him on this ship as well. It works very well. Or, of course, if you have uh, whatever his name is, the British Unique Commander, he'll work in here pretty good, too. So we got preventive maintenance, which reduces our chance of the main turrets, torpedoes, steering gears, and engines becoming incapacitated by 30%, which is very nice. Grease the gears, because this is a pretty darn fast battleship, and when you're maneuvering hard, you want your turrets to be able to keep up. This increases our main battery driver speed by 25% with Dunkirk here. And then um, I, of course, have Adrenaline Rush, because if you're going to be taking damage, you might as well get something out of it. And this decreases your reload time by 0.2% for every 1% of your ship's HP lost. Uh, then I will go down, and I would take the uh, Emergency Repair Expert skill first, because you get an extra charge of a heal. The ship's already down to three charges, so even though they are the super heals, well, the improved specialized heals, having another charge is always pretty good. Now I'll come back down, take Concealment Expert again to get that boost of the ship's detectability. Then take Fire Prevention to get that 10% reduction to your, the chance of your ship catching on fire. And get the maximum number of fires down from 4 to 3. Then finally I'll come back up here, pick, take Bases of Survivability and get those Restorations, Fire, and Flooding Times down by 15%. For the modules, excuse me Norton. For the modules, I don't know, I need to delete that off my computer, jeez. Uh, for the modules, I went with the main armaments mod 1, which reduces the chance of the, of the main battery guns being incapacit incapacitated by another 20% along with all those other goodies that you see on the screen right now. But mainly we want to keep the guns in the fight, of course. And of course the torpedo tubes too. And then I went with uh, Damage Con mod 1, which reduces our chance of catching fire by another 5% and flooding by 3%. Then we went with the aiming systems mod 1 to give us a 7% boost to the main battery dispersion, which is already pretty nice, and this makes it even nicer. The damage con 2 to get our fire and flooding re uh, recovery times down to f by another 15%. Then concealment systems mod 1 to get our detection range down by another 10%. And then I went with main battery mod 3 to get our reload time down by 12%. So, what has this done to the ship? Well, I'm glad you asked, dear viewer. So the main battery guns now reload in 26.4 seconds with nine 18-inch guns with the fire chance that this ship has. I'll even throw the, um, the flags that had back on, on it. Um, that should be... Nope, we're going to have that. I had that. Nope, actually, I had that. There we go. Okay, so now this ship, again, has a 26.4-second reload time on guns that have a 63% chance of causing a fire per shell with nine shells. Okay, and the maximum dispersion is down to 205 meters. All right, all right, all right, all right. And plus you get that 26.4 second reload time on the 18 inch AP as well. That does 14,900 maximum damage. All right, um, maneuverability is now up to 34.1 knots with the, um, with the speed flag. You'll be just touching 40 knots with the engine boost active. Uh, but nothing else has changed there. Um, concealment's now down to 12.8 kilometers too. So yeah, it's a real stealthy boat now. So, all that being said and done, we're going to go ahead and jump into some more battles with the St. Vincent. And I'll meet you guys there in my voiceover review of the St. Vincent. Alright guys, voiceover Mountbatten here. And well, the St. Vincent, I can tell you, this ship was well worth the wait. This is an absolute blast of a ship to play. This is one of the funner ships to come out in recent memory, like up there with the Schlieffen at times. So, generally speaking, the way you're going to want to play this ship is that from long range outs, like 20 kilometers to about 17, 16 kilometers out, go ahead and keep that HE loaded. Because at that range, the dispersion is pretty good. And if the HE wasn't as good as it was, I would say use the ship primarily as an AP ship. But since you have that 63% chance of causing a fire on the target without even the fire flags on, with how decent this dispersion is, you'll be landing like well over half of your shells at longer range if you have decent aim. Which means you'll be starting plenty of fires. It wasn't uncommon for this ship to have 10, 12, 13 fires a match for me when I would be playing at longer ranges more and having to uh, be forced to spam HE. And it is ridiculously easy to burn ships down with the St. Vincent. Um, back when the Duncan came out, I had a couple of commenters saying, yeah, I've heard St. Vincent's like, you know, another conqueror, 
but more maneuverable. And yeah, I would agree with that statement, especially with that aspect of it. Now, the AP is also really good too. I get it's it's 18 inch British BB AP. It packs a punch. It it really does. But I wouldn't use it until you start to get into those closer. Uh, closer in situations, those are more brawly situations, which this line was designed to be mid to close range brawlers. And oh my god, when you can get in those mid to close range situations, um, this ship rocks. You've got the torpedoes with the um, semi guided mechanic to where you have much better angles on them than you should because th these are fixed torpedo tubes in the hull. And they're, they're so far forward that you can basically fire the torpedoes directly in front of your ship, which, when you're brawling, is a massive advantage. And the torpedoes do darn near 30,000 alpha, which is, again, just godly to have in a brawl. So, yes, this ship is either terrifying to be forced to push into because of how good the HE is, or terrifying to see coming at you around the corner. Keep in mind, too, this ship has a 12.8 kilometer detect, so... When you're pushing and there's no CVs around, they're not going to know that you're there until you're on top of them, which is great to have. It, it's a great ship to run down a flank on, get on the flank, get the side of the enemy ships, uh, then obviously load the AP if you can. It's also a great ship to um, have kiting, because again, being forced to push into these 9, 18-inch sh guns that fire these HE shells every 26 seconds with a reload module on, that's going to suck for whoever it is. It doesn't matter if they're a, a DD, a, a cruiser, or a battleship. That level of HE spam is is terrifying to have to deal with. And again, it, it's just like, you know, do you want to get Witherer? Do you want to get Dreadnought with that too? you want to get Confederate with that too with how good this ship is at dealing out damage? So that's how you play this ship and my, my, my short take on the ship. So looking at her in a more detailed manner, now we're going to run through her, her stats again. So her armor... Um, obviously, like I said, it's a battle cruiser. The armor on it isn't fantastic. It's 25 millimeter bound stern, so you can easily get over master tier 10. But with the maneuverability that the ship has, the 34 knot uh, top speed with the speed f with the speed flag, and then you can even go obviously 8% faster than that with the engine boost to where you're almost rocking and rolling at 40 knots. That helps out with the survivability a lot. Um, you can be a little cheeky. And stay kind of stationary. If you have your speed boost activated, you can do some, some quick little throttle jukes here and there. It's obviously not as good at doing it as a, a uh, cruiser or a destroyer. But you'd be surprised how much small incremental changes will throw off the enemy team shots. Like just cranking it up from like 1 4th speed to 3 4 speed back down to full reversed. With the engine boost, you can get a, a nice little juke going on here and there. Again, not as good as a destroyer or, or a light cruiser would be at it. But you can do it. Other than that, running around um, with the engine boost on and just doing some maneuvers is a good way to make sure the ship stays alive with her armor scheme. Because again, the more you move, the faster you move, the harder you're going to be hit for most players that you encounter in random battles. Uh, but definitely not a ship you can sit there and tank with. Does not have the armor for that. Again, it's a battle cruiser. It should ideally be on the move in most situations. Uh, survivability, again, you know, she has like tier 9 BB HP levels, so not a ship that can sit there and tank damage. Just make sure you stay on the move. But the, uh, the, the specialized repair teams will help make up for that a lot. Uh, guns. I cannot praise this thing's guns enough. You have, like, the best of both worlds here when it comes to the British guns. You have, again, the excellent HE. Um, I don't think it's the true British BB HE with the, um, the improved pins, because they only pin 73 millimeters of armor. Yeah, and then the... I'm looking at the Conqueror. She has 105 millimeters of armor pin on her 16-inch gun. So she doesn't get the, the uh, HE pins that the uh, British BBs do, but she certainly has the fire chance there. And again, that fire chance is so good with that 26 second reload time that, sure, you don't have 18 part 1 inch guns, so you can't overmatch 32, but it doesn't matter because you can roast them down anyway. Any battleship that, that's going to be forced to push into you is going to suffer a lot. So you can go to the all flank, be a nice all flank, um, an, an all flank kiter to where if they want the flank, that's fine, but you're going to burn down two or three of their ships just by yourself before they ha even have the opportunity to do that. And again, the AP's good, too. Like, it still has good AP. It's 18-inch AP. So, yeah, w when they show you their broadsides from close range, like 15 kilometers in, get that AP in the tubes and blast their sides and make them go back to port. So, yeah, it, it, it it's just 
it's the guns are so good on the ship. Um, the placement is a bit strange though. Obviously, having the number three turret be in between the uh, superstructure in the well, the the conning tower, and then having the stacks behind it to where you can't shoot directly behind you, but the turret angles are good enough to where you can you know angle your ship out and get those guns on target. It's not like you can stern tank anyway, because again, you have twenty five millimeters of armor on your stern, so it's not like you know you'll be depending upon that stern armor to block the shell so you can't afford to get your turrets on target you're going to need to try to angle anyway to get your armor to actually bounce anything so yeah it's not a huge deal but yes you can't shoot directly back but turrets one and two do have pretty good rear firing angles as does turret three when it comes to the forward firing uh, firing angles as well and again 26 second reload time if you take the reload module which i would recommend um the saint vincent has enough base range that 20.5 kilometer base range is more than enough to hang in there in tier 10 games especially with how maneuverable and how stealthy the ship is combine those factors together and you can easily just stay within your effective range for most of the match all right um like i mentioned the secondaries they're they're nice just for whatever fires they can start i would not build into them that's my um uh, two cents torpedoes um i'm sure you've probably seen or about to see how good these torpedoes are here they reload in um 40 what is it 45 seconds so you'll be spitting these out pretty regularly and again these are 30k alpha torch with good torp angles from the front uh, for some reason right now, I think the torpedo sounds are glitched to where you don't hear the sound effect of the torpedo launching. Not a huge deal, but I just noticed that when I was uh, reviewing the ship. Again, 30k alpha torps. Th these torps are pretty dang silly. Um, granted, it is all in one torpedo, so it's not like the uh, turpets and the German battleships and other battleships have torpedoes on. They have, you know, three or four torpedoes to a rack. So you do have to be pretty precise with your aiming, but you are rewarded very, very generously so with that 30k torpedo alpha. Um, now, again, they don't face back, so you don't have very good angles from the stern. But when you're pushing in, bow first, you got all the torpedoes you need. But, yeah, sure, there's no coverage on the stern. So it's not like the um, turpets where you have the torpedoes mounted in the center. And you can, you know, have pretty good coverage of your bow and stern. But, again, when you're pushing in, they're in more, more than an optimal position for that. Um, AA, um, I got into quite a few CV games and quite a few Super CV ga games, too, at that. AA didn't really feel great didn't really feel terrible with the dfa active of course it feels pretty darn good but um it's nothing to write home about in my opinion it feels like about normal battleship uh aa unless again you get dfa active so it does have that going for it with dfaa maneuverability like i said incredibly fast ship with that speed boost going you'll be touching thir uh, 40 knots so we're well, getting near 40 knots um with that speed boost going which is very nice good for running down flanks or running away or disengaging when you do get overran on a flank because like i said earlier you can't really sit and take sustained damage in the ship even with the specialized repair teams once that's on cooldown and you're being focused on by three or four ships no you can't do that you're not a gk you're not a poison you got to get out of there and that engine boost is great for that great for getting into position great for getting out of position great for great for getting on flanks and shoving ap in the sides of your enemies uh, concealment, like I said, very nice 12.8 kilometer concealment. Great for being able to dictate when you do and don't want to get into a fight. Um, couple that with the 20 kilometer range. Yes, it is shorter for most uh, battleships, but like I said, with this speed and this concealment and this maneuverability that this ship has, you won't have a problem getting into action with the St. Vincent here. So, overall, this is a ship that is absolutely worth the grind, in my opinion. And going back and looking at the other uh, British battle cruisers, there, there's great ships all up and down the line. The Rook, the Hawk, the Duncan. Uh, and then you get this at the, at the pinnacle of the line. These ships are so much fun and are so good up and down the line. So, I would highly recommend grinding out this line. It looks like it's a line that doesn't have really many low points in it. So, yeah. This ship and this line, it's been well worth the wait. I'm glad we finally got the British Battle Cruisers out. So, absolutely, this is a line worth grinding. As for the um, the score for the ship for the Saint Vincent herself, I would give this ship a nine out of ten. It's a very well balanced ship. You have some awesome firepower here, but you can't. Um, take sustained damage it truly is a battle cruiser it's about getting in 
doing damage and getting out and running away or if you want to really go for it and just w key it you can do that but you're not going to be able to do that over and over again like you can with like a gk or a Preussen. Um but yeah nine out of ten for me this is a stupidly fun ship and a line i would recommend you guys grind uh, the pros being of course it's got just an awesome set of guns you get nine 18 inch guns with a 26 second reload time if you take the uh, reload module or a 30 second reload time if you want to take the range module too which i'm sure will work but again for what i was doing with the ship uh today the reload module seemed to be working out the best you get that excellent 63 percent chance of uh, per fire per shell with the he you have some absolutely awesome 18 inch ap on this ship as well with good turret angles fore and aft and of course you get the 30k alpha torps with the improved torpedo angles to where you can basically fire them right in front of your ship along with a 45 second reload time for your torpedoes there of course the ship is stupidly fast stupidly maneuverable excellent marks there and you get dfaa to boot along with the specialized repair teams uh the cons being that of course the armor it's a battle cruiser armor armor scheme so you got some pretty thin armor here lower hp pool for a tier 10 battleship and you do have the wonky turret set up to where you can't fire straight back again that's not a major downside in my book but is one that should be mentioned as well and she does have a fairly short base uh, gun range of 20 kilometers so you do have to take the real the uh, range or the reload module there but that's up to you again not a huge letdown in my book with the good consumer that the ship does have but is a downside it does have shorter range for a tier 10 battleship so guys that's my review of the saint vincent hope you guys enjoyed uh, let me know what you guys think about this ship in the comments down below it's a ship i was long looking forward to and i'm glad she's finally here and she and the whole line is very much worth the wait if you enjoyed today's video make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel one way to 40,000 subscribers and i cannot thank you guys enough for that hope you all have a wonderful thursday hope you enjoyed i hope to catch you guys in the next one